One of Kyleon's many historic features is a plaque on the wall of the Charles Williams Church in Wales Primary School. In 1978, Gwent historian A.R. Kennelly told several variations of the dual legend, including this elaborate tale. One day, Charles had a duel with his cousin Edmund Morgan of Penross, over a girl whom they both loved. And unfortunately, Charles killed Edmund. Now, of course, he had to flee, and the place where he first ran was the church. There he spent half of the night, creeping quietly under the cover of darkness to the waterside, and sailing in his father's ship down the river Usk, far away to Turkey. There, in Smyrna, he spent several years becoming a fig or silk merchant, and amassing great wealth. His old friend, John Hanbury, finally managed to get a pardon for him, through Mrs. Hanbury's friendship with the Duchess of Marlborough, who in her turn was a friend of Queen Anne. So Charles Williams was able to come back to London, where he bought a house in Bow Street, Covent Garden. There are other versions of that story, but as far as we can tell, they all stem from the work of the Archdeacon William Cox, who in 1801 stated of Charles Williams, This Charles fought a duel in 1670 with his relative Edmund, younger son of Thomas Morgan of Penros Vurdios, whom he killed. He then fled to Smyrna, where he became engaged in trade and made a large fortune. Roland Ward has now uncovered much more about Charles Williams. He's written two books, including this, the most recent one. Charles Williams of Carlion, His Life and His Legend. Since then, the two of us have investigated a sword that's been in storage at Newport Museum. And we've explored the fascinating family of the alleged victim of the duel, Edmund Morgan. In doing that, we've seen rarefied records from 1683 that mean a commonly accepted detail of that legend has to be challenged. We've also spent time building a picture of the people and places of Charles Williams' life, where we see commerce and opportunism growing alongside traditional nobility and patronage. You could say new money and old money. There are many people who know more about the history of Kalyan than we do. But from the Charles Williams angle, we now hope to add a little more to that history and to the interpretation of it. Charles Williams died aged 87 in Georgian London in 1720. That was a year before Britain's government had its first Prime Minister. Charles had been away from his Kylian home for at least 54 years, and he'd accumulated a fortune. With no wife or children, his enduring fondness for Kylian ensured that his birthplace benefited from his will. The stylish schoolhouse he funded opened in 1724, four years after his death, and his ethos still reflects his desire to promote Christian knowledge. His school is just a few minutes' walk from his original home. Charles lived in a very eventful period. He would have been a lad in 1646, when fighting came close to his home near the end of the First Civil War. A young commander of the parliamentary forces, on the back foot of Kylian, was a man who would be a mainstay of Charles' life, Bussy Mansell of Britain Ferry. Charles would have known he was living in an age of highwaymen, when religious feelings ran high, and when Wales was more lenient on witches than our neighbours were. It was when Britain saw several outbreaks of the plague as well as the Great Fire of London. His long life took him beyond the birth of the steam engine and towards the Industrial Revolution. Bussy Mansell may have been the first Mansell to light a fire of ambition in Charles William's heart, but others of the family also became major influences on Charles' life, his wealth and his death. Here's Roland. I'm in the church of St. Mary the Virgin, the Margam Abbey Church. These elaborate tombs hold members of the Mansell family, a family that merged into the Talbots, whose name they gave to the nearby Port Talbot. Bussy Mansell 
was in Killian during the Civil War. After that time, the Mansell family had a profound influence on Charles Williams. There are those who say that Charles Williams was a protege of the Mansells and that he held them in high regard. This is very much a fact, as his will shows wishing to be buried in Westminster Abbey near to two Mansells who had died in the 1680s and also his kindness to Bussy Mansell's great-granddaughters with a generous bequest. Further recent research has identified Bussy Mansell, after he changed his allegiance, as being in command of parliamentary soldiers at Kalian during the Civil War in 1646 when Charles was only 13 years of age. It wouldn't be too far-fetched to believe that this was his first encounter with a bright young scholarly Charles living at his father's castle home where the troops would have been stationed. Once his education was complete, did Charles take up an opportunity to work for the estate of Bussy Mansell? There were a few branches of the Mansell family the main one being here at Margam, followed by Britton Ferry, where Bussy Mansell resided. Margam Abbey had been bought for the Mansell family following the dissolution by Sir Rhys Mansell of Penrice Gower, perhaps taking a lead from his son-in-law William Morgan who had bought Lantanum Abbey. Bussy Mansell served as MP for Cardiff and was High Sheriff of Glamorgan in 1677-78. He was someone we can safely assume that Charles Williams held in very high regard. Later in life, Charles went on to lend Bussy a sizeable sum of £5,000. Charles Williams also had an affinity with the Margam branch of the Mansell family, as Charles was lending money to the Margam Mansells in the early 1680s and 1690s. <laughs>